The date is Sunday, October 6th, 2013, and the IZOD IndyCar Series is racing in the Lone Star State. On a circuit constructed in Reliant Park around the historic Houston Astrodome, the circuit will play host to the final street race of the year today. There's quite a few storylines entering the second race of the doubleheader in Houston. However, one driver that isn't mentioned in any of them is the driver of the number 10 Chip Ganassi car. After winning three Indy 500s and four IndyCar championships, three of which were in a row from 2009 to 2011, the brand new Dallara DW12 has not been kind to Dario, and the 2013 IndyCar season has been frankly miserable for the Scotsman. But although he has no hope of winning a fifth championship, he is looking to try and have a good end to the season, and maybe even snag a win. By the end of this race, though, he wasn't in victory lane, but was rather in the back of an ambulance. Marbles on the outside there, Sato oh, gets he got loose. loose. Oh! oh no! Oh my goodness! That is a horrifying ride for Dario Franchitti. Oh man, that is an oval crash we've seen before. Dario suffered a spinal fracture and a severe concussion, injuries that led to his retirement from racing that was announced just a month later. But before that was announced, it was obvious that he wouldn't be able to race in Fontana, the last race of the 2013 season. There were some that expected that the number 10 Chip Ganassi entry would just not show up to Auto Club two weeks later. However, there would be a number 10 car on the entry list, and the driver behind the wheel of it was an interesting choice. The driver Chip selected was Canadian Alex Tagliani, who had been racing in IndyCar since 2000 when he drove for players Forsyth. He had only one win in IndyCar, that coming in 2004 at the Champ Car Race in Road America. However, he was by no means a bust. He was a decent driver and even a team owner temporarily, owning Fast Racing, a team that was formed by Tagliani from the remains of Roth Racing, run by a fellow Canadian, Marty Roth. Although the team was short-lived, its legacy still lives on with the assets being merged into Schmidt-Peterson, which is of course now Aaron McLaren SP. Tagliani had been driving for Barracuda Racing full-time that year, but after the doubleheader in Toronto, he left the team and wouldn't start another race until the last race of the year in Fontana. I wish I could say Alex's weekend driving for Chip Ganassi was great, but it really wasn't. For some reason, Chip Ganassi Racing's qualifying for this race was just strange, with Alex starting 21st, Scott Dixon, who was in the championship hunt starting in 17th, and Charlie Kimball, who had just gotten his first and only IndyCar win earlier that year in 4th. As for the race itself, Alex would lead 5 laps on the day, but hit the wall in lap 210, ending his race but thankfully walking away uninjured. There is a real possibility that Alex would drive the car for the next season, with Alex taking part in some postseason tests with the team in Sebring. In December of 2013, however, it was revealed that both driver and team had parred ways. Tony Kanaan would take over driving duties for the number 10 starting in 2014, a role that he held until 2017. Since 2018, there's been three separate drivers in that car, the latest being Alex Polo, who won the 2021 IndyCar Championship, the first in the 10 car for 10 years. However, as most of you know, the summer of 2022 for that 10 car has not been pretty. As for a different Alex, Tagliani would race in IndyCar until 2016, when he made his final start at that year's Indy 500 driving for the legend himself, AJ Foyt. It may just be a small blip in a 17-year-long career, but Alex Tagliani's time at Chip Ganassi is still worth talking about. Thank you for watching, and have a great afternoon.